All right, show of hands here. Who remembers Byron's E30? And moreover, who remembers that it's partway through a K24 swap? I showed this car at the very end of our first E30 build episode, and now it's time to revisit it. Because today, Byron needs a little bit of help getting this car closer to the finish line. For this episode, not only are we going to be helping on a wild 350 horsepower NAK swap, we're going to be doing some CAD design, some heavy fabrication, and I've got a sick new tool to show off. But before we get there, let's talk about what we're aiming to accomplish. First and foremost, we've got Byron's Kinsler individual throttle bodies. These are a critical component for his four piston engine build, which is set up to produce over 300 wheel horsepower on pump gas with daily driver reliability. But the only available air box for these stacks doesn't fit his application, and he doesn't want to run them unfiltered. So what we need to do is figure out how to mate this filter assembly to these throttle bodies using these particular aluminum standoffs. And this might seem like an easy job on the surface, and maybe it is, but for this, we're gonna whip out a new tool. A while back, I bought this Einstar Shining 3D Scanner. Yep, the exact same one pretty much everybody else is using because the cost of entry is astoundingly low. It's not the highest detail or the craziest grade of scanner, but at a thousand bucks all in, I think it's gonna do the trick just fine for this job and many more. To get started, we're gonna put reflective markers all over this thing, mostly because the shiny surface of the velocity stacks might confuse the lasers coming out of the scanner itself. These dots help the scanner know exactly where it is in 3D space and just makes the process easier. They're cheap, so let's go overboard. Now, if you're wondering why on earth we need a 3D scanner to do this job to begin with, well, the short answer is we don't. We could measure this part by hand and draw it in Fusion 360 the old fashioned way. But there are a few factors that would make that tough. Mainly, I don't know what the taper of the velocity stacks is, and I don't know if the throttle bodies themselves are equally spaced or not. We could find out for ourselves, or we could just have the computer tell us, and I'll use any excuse I can get to buy a tool. The scanning process only took a handful of minutes, and the resulting scan was beyond any expectation I had. Now, I can't say I'm a professional at this because I'm not. I don't really know what I'm looking at. This is my first time ever working with a mesh model. But the software was pretty clear in figuring out how to use it and what to do and to make it whole. And so after a bit of clicking around and fiddling with it, we've got what I think will give us every bit of information we need to build a competent part. Bringing the model into Fusion 360 was admittedly tricky because Fusion doesn't like meshes, but once I figured it out, I was able to cut the throttle bodies in half, and that gave us a cross-section view and all of the information we're going to need to build a filter mount. It has the diameter and spacing of the throttle bodies and our four mounting provisions all on a single plane. This means we can design a part that can be cut from a single piece of aluminum. A perfect job for our friends at Send Cut Send, but to do that, we actually need to design it. I also scanned the filter assembly itself so I knew what the outside dimensions of this part need to be, and then I figured it was probably smart to stop here and make sure I've got this stuff working correctly. All right, to be clear, I don't really know what I'm doing here, so we're gonna 3D print some parts and make sure that I've got the scale correct. I mean, I believe I got it right, but who knows, because I certainly don't. So assuming that this actually fits into our filter, we'll know that we have the basics correct. And we'll know that our material thickness is right. Because this is essentially gonna be the backing plate that needs to mate with all of the parts. It needs to mate and interface with the filter housing and the throttle bodies. And it looks like we got it right. I'm pretty stoked. I didn't have to do any calibrations. The machine got all of the measurements down to, you know, the fraction of a millimeter correct. Pretty impressive. Now let's draw the inside part of this and see if it's actually gonna fit on the throttle bodies. So I took the scan data from the dimensions of the throttle bodies and the scan data from the dimensions of the filter, merged it all together onto a single piece of aluminum that I know our friends at Send Cut Send can cut. And then I merged all of those assemblies together in CAD to make sure it would work in real life. And it looks pretty good, so let's try it for real. All right, so now we're gonna walk over to Khalil and Byron's shop. We're gonna check this piece on Byron's throttle bodies. I've drawn kind of the insides here. Again, printed only half because that's all that fits on the bed of the 3D printer and we don't need more than that. We know the outside fits the filter. Let's see if this actually fits the part that it's supposed to. 
Given that our first 3D test print fit well, I have high hopes that this one will too. We already know that it fits to the filter assembly. At this point, we want to make sure that the bolt holes line up to hold the panel in place, and then we need to insert the velocity stacks to make sure that they are on center. All that's left is to decide how we're going to seal the whole thing up. But I've got a solution and I'll show you when the part arrives later in the episode. For now, we've got to turn our attention to the second project I want to conquer, and that is redesigning this thing. Believe it or not, this is one of the engine mounts for Byron's K24, and clearly it needs some help. But making this in CAD is gonna be a totally different animal. If I wanted to try to draw this up the old fashioned way, I'd be trying to measure where all of these reference points are in relation to each other in 3D space, and that wouldn't be easy to do. I could get close, but getting it accurate would be very difficult. And considering this has been in Byron's car holding his engine up in a very specific point, and there's not much clearance, we've gotta get it perfect. When we scan this thing, what we really need off of it are reference points. We need the three points where it mounts to the block on this side, where it mounts to the chassis on this side, and then where it holds up the throttle actuator up top. This is supposed to be a drive-by-wire car with ITBs, and he's using an E46 throttle actuator for that, and it barely fits in this space. So what we need are lots of reference points so we can design this in CAD and make something that kind of replicates it without looking so terrible because I know Byron will agree, this is a mock-up part that he probably would have been happy if no one ever saw, but we got to show it off for the episode so we can actually scan it. So let's make something that looks better than this that does this job stronger while looking better too. So it's a rinse and repeat of the same process earlier. We scan the part, we bring the data into the scanning software, convert it to a mesh, and then we bring that into Fusion 360 so we have something to work with. Looking at it here, we've got all of the basic information that we need to build a part, but it is kind of confusing to look at. So let's flip the part upside down so it's oriented the way that it is in the car, and then draw in all of those reference points that we're gonna build off of. Over the course of a couple of hours, I built this, a sheet metal engine mount that can be made from flat stock. It's not the most beautiful or elegant thing I've ever drawn, but it meets all of Byron's requirements and it'll be lightweight. That's because we're having Send Cut Send cut all of this out of 14 gauge sheet metal. It's thinner than I would normally work with, but Byron's entire build has a focus on lightweight, which makes sense considering that's the name of his shop, Lightbow. But given the box nature of the design, I think it'll be plenty strong and so does he. So let's get this stuff folded up and fitted together. But we only gave ourselves one chance to get it right. There are a lot of pieces here, but that's because you're looking at both engine mounts that we have to make. We're only going to cover one in this episode. So with all that said, we can look at our CAD model and figure out exactly what degree to bend all these parts to. We can figure out where to bend them and really use that as a template for how to construct these pieces. But I will say it can be very easy to bend them the wrong way if you're not paying attention. And I say that because I've done it plenty of times. I think anybody with a brake has. Now, if you don't have a brake, it's not a big deal. Send, cut, send will bend your parts for you and they'll probably do a better job than we're gonna do. But let's make some really careful marks. I've put 30 thousandths indications on all the edges of the parts and pieces so I can tell where to clamp them. We just gotta get the correct orientation in the brake. We'll get them bent up, tack it together and make sure it matches our model before we weld it all together. If you didn't know any better, the indication marks I've cut in the edges of the metal really just kind of looked like I've dinged it on something. They hardly stand out. But if we know how to use them, we can connect them with a ruler and that will indicate all of our bend lines. In fact, it's a perfect indication of where to clamp the brake itself. It will subdivide the bend into two equal parts and give us a very accurate folded part. The only challenging part is getting the degree of the bend correct. I try my best to sneak up on it when I can, but even still, I've been known to overbend my parts. Thankfully, one of my favorite shop tricks is unbending metal. Check this out. You don't need an arbor press. A hydraulic press will work as well. But by pressing round stock into the bend, we can unfold it without any deformation. It has its limits to be clear, but this trick has saved me so many times. For some of these parts, we can use the supports that we've designed to tell us exactly how far to bend them, but for others, we're going to have to look at our CAD model. For example, 
The top plate of the mount arm itself needs to be bent over 90 degrees on one side and under 90 on the other, but both sides need to be parallel. In order for all of the parts and pieces to fit together perfectly, all of our bends need to be accurate. Very accurate. For the first time, I'm going to be using 16th inch tungsten and 045 filler rod. That's only marginally bigger than MIG wire, so all of our tolerances have to be tight. A majority of the pieces for the motor mount we're making today come from Send Cut Send, but there are a few pieces that we need that don't. Particularly, we need some 2 inch diameter tube to make up the base of the engine mount. This is what's going to sit atop the rubber isolator so that the engine doesn't shake the chassis to death. At the cost of perhaps getting too fancy with it, I wanted to bevel cut the top of this tube so that it flowed with the overall design of the mount. In the end, the details matter, and while I don't think the mount will turn out beautiful, I want to give it its best chance. So clearly, I've made this engine mount more complicated than it needs to be, but I think it will also turn out rather nice, all things considered. And what I think is important to remember is that although we've used complicated tools to get to this point, actually making parts like this doesn't require them. Anybody could boot up CAD software like Fusion, design incredible parts and pieces, and then rely on SendCut Send to help them get to the finish line. Even without a welder at your disposal, simply design the part to be bolt together. You don't need a brake because they'll bend it for you. They'll even powder coat or CAD plate the part depending on what you need. Countersinking, captive hardware, even anodizing, Send Cut Send does it all, and it's why I'm so stoked to work with them. They are helping me build these awesome projects and bring them to life. Yeah, sure, they're a sponsor of the channel, but I'm doing episodes like this one, not for that sake, but to show you guys that anybody can build parts just like these. So I urge you to do so. Head to sendcutsend.com slash stanceworks and get 15% off your next order. It's as easy as that. And with that, we've got a finished motor mount arm, at least largely tacked together until Byron needs to make any final changes. Sitting next to his original template, I think this thing came out awesome. Again, it's kind of funky in design, but it meets the constraints he set forward, and trying to design this part out of cardboard templates and making it by hand would have been more or less impossible. But thanks to the power of Fusion 360, we know that we have a carbon copy of what Byron gave us, but it's spiffied up a bit, and it should be stronger than ever before. With the motor mount crossed off the list, let's bring this episode full circle and get back to that air filter. And this is our finished part. It's got our gaskets in place. We've held them in with rivets through the backside so that if you're looking at this thing installed on the car, it still looks nice. And if we flip it around, we've got rivet washers holding the gaskets in place. I think if I were going to make a revision to this, I'd probably put a full ring to kind of distribute that load and help everything seal up. But honestly, it's not going to make a difference on this application. This thing turned out awesome. To me, it really looks like something that could have come from some sort of race parts company or, you know, aftermarket, what have you, off the shelf. But no, we made it and it only cost us a few dollars. Thank you again, Send Cut Send. This stuff is killer. I did do a test fit earlier. I can confirm it fits the filter assembly. Perfect, exactly as hoped. It's a tight fit, really gotta kinda convince the, the Zeus clips to pop into place, but I think that just means that it's really sealing against the, the kind of the filter surface really well. And I don't think that we could ask for anything better. I mean, this is gonna work awesome as long as it fits, and that's the final question. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I offset the throttle bodies towards this end by, I think it was about a quarter inch, because we have that little room for this to clear. I think it was the brake booster or master cylinder. We've got about a sixteenth of an inch for it to clear, so fingers crossed we got everything right. Let's go find out and find out if Byron's happy with it. Given that we 3D printed this part before, we know that it fits. There's no guesswork involved. We also know that the filter fits to it, so the only question is does that entire assembly fit inside the car together? Theoretically, we could have scanned the engine bay as well and answered that before we ever got this far along. But I didn't want to overcomplicate this journey, and I feel relatively confident it will get it right. In all, our goal here is just to solve some of the problems that come with swapping an engine. 
I know that these solutions we've come up with are overly complicated, at least more so than they need to be. We could have zip tied filters around the ends of the velocity stacks and built a simple tube based engine mount. But I want to use the tools that we have at our disposal to solve these problems in the most professional way possible. I don't want anyone to look at this and decide that there was a corner that was cut or that it could have been done better. It doesn't mean that that's infallible. I'm just a guy in a garage trying to do his best. But it's the way I like to do it. And if anything, I hope that I empower some of you out there to pursue the same. To build the best parts you can no matter what. Even if it takes that extra bit of time. No corners cut, just good quality fabrication. <laughs>